Shut up and sit down. Hello, everyone, and welcome into a read out short clip here. Uh, this is from our latest episode. Hope you enjoy. Take two. What do you think went wrong? <laughs> what I think went wrong. Oh, man, why don't you just ask the easy question and say what, what went right? Because that just be like Charlotte. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, man. It was, I think, what I was thinking was basically like the first half really wasn't as close as the score said. What was it, 9-7 to seven or halftime, I think? Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I really think they were dominating the line of scrimmage and they, they had the ball most of the time. And I think they were just wearing us out and then they got in the – in the third quarter and we just we didn't have anything left in the tank and yeah. we just kind of had a meltdown that's my theory um i completely I agree think, i don't think the team has quit or anything like that i think a lot of people are going to be saying like oh well they, they just they just quit on us and stuff i just think sometimes stuff happens um but yeah it was frustrating nonetheless i think they just came out flat really um i yeah. think they did not come to play i don't think I mean, first half they did, and then second half, like you said, I don't know if it was just frustration kicked in or what. Um, Shanley threw the two interceptions there, but what else do you have, you know? I mean, for me, it really looks like, you know, again, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to watch it live, but going back and look at some of the stuff, it just seems like they weren't prepared. Yeah. It seems like you come out, and I kind of agree with Matt, like stuff happens sometimes. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's your day in the barrel, right? It just happens. But I don't think they were prepared, which blows my mind, because you had two weeks to get them ready, yeah. and Charlotte just was like, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to send this angry bowling ball that way. Y'all go stop him. Yeah. And we could. I mean, if you look at the stats, mm-hmm. if you look at the stats, Charlotte had 448 total yards. Uh, Western had 256. We had three turnovers. One of those was a fumble. Um, I mean... And, of course, time of possession was the big thing here. Charlotte had 38 minutes. Dear God. That's yeah. just well, killer. I'm that surprised, though. Like, if you look at Charlotte's stats on the year, they were already averaging, I think it was 36 minutes. So that's kind of what they do. And we just couldn't couldn't hold on to the ball. Couldn't yeah. do anything. You know, you get on the field, go three and out, and then they run the ball down the field and, and score. Like, you're not going to touch the ball if they've got it. Yeah. I don't have I, that many opportunities. Yeah, I have a confession. I did not watch the second half. I flipped back and forth, and I was like, this is awful. (laughs) It was frustrating. (laughs) It was. Gosh, it was frustrating. I watched the entire first half. I had to let, you know, do a few things around the house, came back, and it was already, what, 23 to 7? And I was like, oh, man, this is getting bad. So I flipped, changed the channel, watched something else for a little bit, flipped back, and it was 30 to 7. And then Shanley throws the interception. And I said, well, this game's over. And I changed it back. Yep. And I never <laughs> went back to watch it. <laughs> I wanted to vomit, man. It was, it was frustrating. Yes. It was so frustrating. But, but the crazy thing to me, like I'm looking at the rushing stats, they rushed the ball 50 times. That's crazy. 50. And they only passed it at 26. So t- basically two-thirds of the time they ran the football. And they only averaged 4.2 yards of rush, but they rushed it 50 freaking times. Yeah. That's... And they couldn't stop them. Well, and I mean, 4.2, that will get you there. Yeah, Calvin. You, yeah, I mean, you do it three times in a row, you're going to get a first down. Well, I mean, that but Benny, my, Benny my averaged seven, seven yards of carry, so I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, LeMay had over 10 yards, right? Is that what you were just saying? Yeah, I yeah. He, what you said. Yeah, he averaged seven yards and. That Calvin Camp, those two combined for over 29 carries between them. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's crazy. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth, man. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like the morning after hungover thing, and you're just like, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> what happened? Yeah, what was that all about? <laughs> um, so, I'm going to take this time right now to justify myself as why I said Shanley should start, especially after that horrendous play. Um, Good luck, bro. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Um, so, my thing is, going into that game, at the if you watched the film, if you watched how Shanley played and did everything, he was the up-and-coming. Now, I don't know if the guys didn't play well as a unit just because everybody was flat or what, but it was 
I mean, I, you can't say it was a time zone thing because, I mean, Charlotte's on Eastern it's time. An hour, yeah, it's an hour. It's that's not that big a deal. Yeah, no, no it's weak. Nothing. I'm reaching. I'm grabbing for straws here. But, you know, it, it's... That's your first argument is the time zone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That Eastern time, one. man. That's what I got. If you had a draft of excuses, <laughs> your number one pick is the time zone? Well, I was going with Charlotte poison the the uh, pregame meal, but I didn't. Yeah, think his, that would his flow. second one was that Shanley had the squirts. Like that's yes, his, yeah, that's what it was. That was the second draft. <laughs> so I mean, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. No, no, you're good. Um, <laughs> but I, I think as no, a we're even, I guess right. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, I think as a unit, everybody. I think it was just a unit. Both sides of the ball, everybody just played horrendously. Um, I still stand behind my pick because Shanley. Even though we, I didn't see very many glimmers of hope in this game, uh, except for Kavarius Thomas. That guy was awesome. He's a hoss. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. That was the funniest thing watching him on the field. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> who is that tall fullback? Uh, yeah, who is that offensive lineman that has just uh, lined up in the backfield? Uh, but big boy. Yeah, he, he's a big guy. I was, I had not seen yeah. him on. What is he like six? Six four, four like two fifty, two forty. Yeah, he's only six four. He looks six eight on the that's, with the that, cameras. That's well, what he's the, not six eight, but I think he's like six four, six. Yeah, five. they say six he's four and like two forty is is what everybody had said, and it was one of those things like when mm. you watch. I know kind of what you mean, Devin. When you see again, I didn't get to watch it, but when you see like some of his high school tape, it's like, oh, like you said, that's a that's a lineman. Nope, nope, that's their quarterback. Oh dear God, he he's six four and two fifty according to ESPN. So y'all are correct. But he, of course, my thing is, as bad as this season is, you don't burn the red shirt. Nah. You just hold on to uh, him. Just... Can I talk on that? Yeah, you Please. go right ahead, buddy. Here's what drives me crazy about that. Is he, I don't remember what game it was. It might have been like Maine or something. But he brings in Thomas for, I think he played like three plays in that one game. I don't know if it was Maine or something. I think it was at home. I'm pretty sure it was Maine. Um and then he hasn't played him again, and then he plays him in this game in, what, one series Yeah. that he goes and scores a touchdown? Yeah. So he, he has, like, you know, 20 yards and a touchdown on the year, and he's already played two games. Well, what happens if somebody gets injured or you decide, oh, man, this kid's actually pretty good, maybe we should play him this year or whatever, and he wins a starting job, and then he plays five or six games, and then you've got a season that you're – so far, you're one and five, um, and then you burn one of this guy's years. Like, I don't understand the logic. Like, you either you play the guy the whole time and let him be the, the red zone zone read guy. Like, every time you get in there, throw him in and see if he can score, or don't play him yet. Like see, if he, if he hadn't played yet, you could play him four out of six games going forward this, and see. still redshirt him next year. Now, see, I've got a, I kind of got an opposite theory there. I don't think, I don't agree with the main play, and I don't agree with this Charlotte play. Um, but I think like the last three games of the year, you let him go in. You know, you don't I'm burn that red shirt. I'm cool with it. Yeah, you just let him get some experience for the next year, because that kid's going to be the future, one way or another. Um, he's, he's the most heralded recruit we've had. Yeah, he's he looked like Frankenstein. It's the only thing I could think of. He was like this big dude in the backfield, and I was laughing because, like, you know, direct like he snap. He looks out of place. Yeah, he was, which is fine. I love it. Direct snap to him, he was, just takes off upfield, and linebackers are, like, bouncing off. And I'm like, dude, that kid is good. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the clip from our latest episode. Subscribe for our weekly Red Out podcast. And always remember, go Tops.